Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. And Colin, we are less than 12 hours removed from North Texas, <clears throat> beating UTEP 31-13. Yep. And you you were right. You yep. had the score prediction right. 31-14 to 14 was your prediction. So we'll mark that up in the Pick'em series as Colin was correct. Uh, how are Thank you feeling God. this morning of uh, Sunday, August 28th? After feeling like an end. feeling like an oracle, you know. I just <laughs> no, I mean, sorry, excuse me. It feels uh, I mean, I obviously thought they were gonna come out a little bit hotter because I said that on the podcast. Um, but they played well, and it was pretty surprising actually. I mean, obviously I predicted it, but to actually see it happen, I was like, all right, this is this is good. Um, there were some concerns um that I have, but we can get into those later. Yeah, but I think that uh, I think overall. I think everyone played pretty well. And I'm really glad that, you know, we weren't here sitting here going, all right, well, it's over. <laughs> so uh, right. what, what about you? It was, and this is the thing about us becoming a little bit more detached from the program. Obviously, you know, we still know every, you know, Seth Wren going down the list. We still know people at North Texas and still know the team and stuff like that. But when we becoming a little bit more detached, obviously you, you grow a little bit in, in terms of fandom, right? You're just like, okay, now I can just yeah. kind of support them to a degree, just become a fan <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. And for me, the past couple of years have been so painful to watch that there was still <laughs> that trepidation. There was still that, yeah, well, you know, they're, they're doing some things right, but, you know, Austin Ani misses a throw, you know, like this happens, like the penalties happen. We'll talk about those as well. But like, there was always like a caveat to me, like, being hesitant to be happy yeah and by the end of the game i was still kind of in that realm i was still like okay they beat you tip and we'll talk about obviously this isn't like this isn't like them beating smu right it's not even close to the same thing but i i do want to make sure we give this team their flowers because i said last podcast i think it was and i do want to give Seth the his credit here as well beating utep in a rain delay in front of a sold out uh, Sun Bowl on the road in week zero with all the turnover that you've had, you lose the Murphy twins, you lose Brammer, you're going to list all of that to get a 31 to 13 win over a team that had a better record than you last year. I mean, I, I can't ask for anything more. You, you can't, you can't ask for anything more. Yeah. We're going to nitpick cause that's what we do on this podcast. And that's what we do as you know, critics i guess you want to analysts but i mean good lord man 31 to 13 that's best case scenario it's best yeah. case scenario right there so uh congratulations to the team for doing that and i'm starting to come around on this team being as good as we said they were going to be we were both had them at seven and five with yep. them beating utep before the season and so nothing's changed in that regard i think we would both say they would still feel like around a seven and five team but it's good to see that we're, our expectations are actually being met for once. I think that's the way to say it. For once. I mean, for the first time since 2018. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I got you. And I think um, there are a few surprises. I, I didn't realize that Oscar Ragsdale and Isaiah Johnson would play so. Uh, and Iowa Dai. But, he didn't, I, but I meant they, they didn't play as much as I thought, whereas oh, Adai yeah. did. Um, I think another surprise was that Roger Burns still kind of stood out as the number one receiver, um, I believe. Um, and then, I mean, Austin, Ani, obviously 16 for 29, not an amazing uh, pass to incomplete or completions to incompletions rate, but he had three touchdowns. So, I mean, what more could you, could you want? I'm looking up what 16 divided by 29 is. I'm going to guess 55. 56, 55. Okay. Yeah. Hey, if we get 55% completion percentage, Austin, Ani, this team might be dangerous. <laughs> Wasn't it 55 last year? Than last year? Oh, okay. 4%, 4 higher, than percent higher than last year. Um, I will also throw in, just as we're generally recapping things, uh, Jake Roberts. Shout out yep. Jake Roberts um, yep. for for his game. I mean, he had that one catch where also he threw it like legitimately a yard behind, behind him. him, and he yeah. turned around and snagged it for a first. I think that was on third down as well. It's like, all right. And I, I'm not going to turn this into a just a we're right podcast, but this is exactly what we said last time was the run game will be what this offense is predicated on. And if yep. you get 
Jake Roberts, Tommy Bush, Jay Macklin, I thought was good. Um, Deontay, uh, I'm sorry, Damon Ward uh, was was good. Uh, Rod Burns was good. If you get that, the offense just is far more versatile than last year. I think that was a pretty safe um, prediction from me there. Now, I will say, I I, I think Oscar Attaway is the best running back they have. Like, I, I think just from watching those four, and I, I'm cool with them rotating the four. It looked like they stayed fresh. It was That was really good. Oscar Attaway, to me, looked like the best back. And I know that they all had their individual moments, Johnson, uh, Adai, Ragsdale, and whatnot. To me, Attaway, when he carried the ball, just looked like the back that we expected him to be, right, before he got hurt last year. Yeah. I Well, I mean, it's weird because he didn't – he had six carries compared to Adai, who had 17. Yeah. So, I mean, and one of his runs were – uh, this is Oscar, by the way. Oscar had a uh, long as 16 yards, and he only had 23 yards total. But I do agree, like when he was out there, like that's the, that's that's the big guy right there. And when he got that touchdown as well, that was nice. So yeah, um, I just that's what I I don't know. So I I think they're gonna continue to rotate those four. I mean, a lot of teams rotate three. I don't know of many teams that rotate four. So yeah, it was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it was it was weird. Uh, but like I said, Adai to get 17 of those carries. Former walk on. I mean, I'm not saying he's not good. I think he's good, but it's like, it's kind of like the whole Rod Burns situation where last year they needed a die and they needed Burns yeah. to be really good for them. This year, I'm interested to see you have Attaway back, right? You have Bush, you have Macklin now. You have these guys who are legit guys. At what point, and is there a point where you start pulling away maybe from those Macklin and Dice? I'm not saying they're not good, but I just yeah. don't think they're as good as Attaway and Bush and go down. Jair Short didn't even play either. So, for, yeah, for I, I, which, yeah, which is great because it looked like all the receivers, like people were getting open, which is nice to see. Um, but we also knew UTEP's secondary was going to be a concern here, right? Yeah. Going into it. So, um, I, UTEP, UTEP didn't impress me really. No. Um, at all def- defensively. Now I will say, well, we'll get to the North Texas defense versus UTEP offense in a second, but like defensively UTEP's defense line didn't look like it really gave North Texas any trouble at all. They were carving out holes. And that's one thing Blesh and Latrell, I'm going to continue to heap praises on them. The run game, just th- the way that they're able to create h- lanes for their running backs. Yeah. It's very, very, very impressive. Like, so I want to give full credit to Blesh and Latrell on that because that's not that's something you scheme. That's not just oh, we're we're bigger than you, we're better than you. Because they did that to UTSA last year. They did that to everybody they played last year in the second half of the season. And for them to continue that, yeah. I'm looking at this team like this offense and being like, okay, don't let me down now. But you might actually have something here if Austinani can complete 55 percent of his passes. That's true. And you can run the ball like this because that's just different. And you have the receivers, obviously, the way that they do. So um, anything else on the North Texas offense front? I was just going to say, you mentioned the the offensive line. I mean, they had no sacks, no tackles for a loss, which has obviously been a talking point for you and I for how many years in a row? Um, a obviously, last year was a little bit different. but yeah. um, So that was good to see, despite them not really having any pressure uh, on Oni. Um, and then not only that, I would also say that, uh, again, I'm just – happy that i saw some receivers make some plays um yeah. i mean jake roberts i believe it was was it rod burns who caught that uh yeah the, the 41 the, the over the, the yeah 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 41 yarder that which was just i was like oh like that's a play and then yeah. obviously tommy bush gets in and gets a touchdown so it was it was nice to see you know it being spread around a little bit so if you how would you summarize austin on performance i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because like, because 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 we you and I just pointed out uh, plays that the receivers made, and I saw a lot of times when Austin would throw into like double coverage, and it was just you know UTEP couldn't or yeah yeah UTEP couldn't you know convert on any of that or there, there it was just like a hail mary type of throw where it's like all right out route two guys just like on these dudes so I will knock him for that but he did also have three touchdowns and you can't you can't say that he didn't make those happen so. Um, but some of the plays like the Rod Burns play, like unless Rod Burns just makes that spectacular catch, that doesn't happen. Uh, the Jake Roberts throw, if he doesn't turn around and catch that behind him, that's a pick probably. So, you know, there's, there's, there's give and take here, but I'm, I think that this is the first time in a long time where I've walked away and I wasn't like, all right, at halftime, let's put in somebody else. 
after the first quarter, we were almost ready to put someone else in, though. That's true. The second quarter really flipped in because it was 0-0 at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. And both teams, I think, were like, who's going to break first, I think, to a degree. Yeah. And uh, UTEP, and this is where we'll start to transition to the, the UTEP offense for North Texas defense. I have a lot of notes on the defense specifically, but I think one thing that I, I, I de- we want this podcast to be is more like reactionary and just like kind of big picture stuff, right? Yeah. I, I could talk about this defense and Phil Bennett for about 30 minutes here, but I'll try to summarize it real quick. Defensively, I don't want to overreact to the scoreboard. UTEP had 13 points, right? Which in theory is great. And second half, I think was um was great from the North Texas defense. I think it was pretty vanilla. I think they just realized once they got ahead of UTEP, they knew UTEP had to throw the ball, and yeah. they knew UTEP does not have the elite receivers anymore with Jacob Cowing and Justin Garrigan. So Phil Bennett just said, all right, we're just going to drop eight. And that's all they did. You literally just saw Gavin Hardison back there like, <sighs> yeah, <sighs> who's open? Nobody's open. He's rolling around. He's got like – yeah, he's got like 20, 20 seconds back there in the pocket and can't find anybody because they just drop eight into it. So, yes, Phil Bennett, that, that's a great job from him. When, once you have the lead, and this is another thing that could make this team dangerous, is when they have the lead is their defense can become a lot more conservative and their run game will carry them to, to wins whenever they have the lead. So I feel good about them against bad teams. Like that's one thing I really do, which is, which is a big deal. But when the game was close in the first half, Right, UTEP first drive of the game, explosive play gets down into field goal range, misses a field goal. Okay, so we're like, okay, dodged a bull a little bit there. Yeah, second drive, I believe it was they drive down the field, get down to the one bad snap on fourth on fourth and goal, and um, end up uh, turnover on downs. North Texas takes over. You're like, okay, dodged a second bullet, and those two and then i think utep scored a touchdown on, on the next dra- series whatever it was but regardless it's like those are the opportunities utep had and they had a couple more opportunities to really score um to put points on the board and they just never did i mean utep ends the game with 293 passing yards 107 rushing yards so you're looking at a about a 400 yard game from utep that mm-hmm. only results in 13 points you yeah. have to weigh which of those stats do you put more weight in and for me it is probably the 400 like yeah you you give up 400 yards to a UTEP team, and in the second half you basically played cover four, drop eight the whole time, and we're just like, do whatever you want. Like we're we're gonna give you these five yard passes. So I, I want to give them credit for being able to play that well when you have the lead, but at the same time in the first half it definitely didn't feel like a defense that I was trusting at all. Yeah, and it was weird because again we also didn't have. Sorry, I guess North Texas. I got to be a journalist. Uh, North Texas didn't have uh, any <laughs> um, tackles for loss. Uh, I think they had one sack. Yeah, one yeah, sack. Had, yeah. Um, so I think that's also, I mean, because especially when you're letting Gavin Hardison stay in the pocket that long. I mean, there were times where it was just like, what are you doing? Like, get to him, get to him. And obviously, yeah. like you said, they were dropping a lot of guys. But at some point, you want to get a hit or something on him. Um, and it, it didn't it didn't feel like there was a lot of pressure there, especially at the beginning as well. Um, if, if since we're, that's what we're gauging it off of. And then secondly, like you said, um, it just, I think you have to base it off of their first, you know, few drives, because like you said, the big plays did happen for UTEP. Yep. They were able to get down the field and they were able to sustain drives. They just couldn't finish. And I think that's almost more of an indictment on the UTEP offense than it is on the North Texas defense. Yeah. Like, like, like I said, I don't feel great about like the UTEP offense. I, I didn't feel good about UTEP as a whole watching them i didn't think they're they were very yeah. good but offensively without cowing and garrett it's like and they didn't run the ball that much so it was it was very uh unique now we have to talk about so so in, in to summarize that the first half on the field part i give phil bennett enough credit from that from that yeah game. i still need to see i'm very scared of smu still like there's makes no mistake about it this does not change how i feel about their them going to smu or hosting smu rather um we gotta talk about the penalties though this this <laughs> colin i can't believe i can't believe what we watched there for in el paso where they literally jumped off sides twice in the first five minutes 
of the game. And I was yep. like, I tweeted out, I was like, dang, you know, the Murphy twins aren't even here anymore. And we're, and North Texas is still jumping <laughs> off sides. That's funny. And then after I tweet that, there are back to back roughing the passer penalties. Yep. And I was like, the Murphy twins are gone. This should be, this should be alleviated. And they kept talking about on the broadcast, like, Phil Bennett's been talking about if they can just clean up the penalties then uh, they're going to be a really, really good defense. And I'm like, I agree. They haven't cleaned up the penalties, though. And yeah. these are different people. This is – um, it was Larry Nixon with with uh, with one. Didn't Katie Davis have one Katie as well? Katie Davis got one as well. It's like – and so then, again, this is the same thing as last year. They cut to Phil Bennett on the sideline, chewing them out. Crazy. Them out. Angry. He got more camera time than the players. He got so much camera time. They're just – He's just yelling and yelling and yelling. And I just was like, man, I'm tired of this already. That's what I tweeted out. I'm tired of this already because, like, he's a good defense coordinator. Don't get me wrong. But, good Lord, this is the same thing that happened last year. You've had 365 days to fix this, and they, it hasn't been fixed at all. They're still jumping off sides. They're still roughing the passer penalty. And the players still don't appear to understand how impactful that can be on a game. Yeah. Like this is a this is now year two. Last year I gave them. Last year I actually deflected blame and put it on the Murphy twins, which again I still would because I still they were still hotheads. But regardless, this is no longer a player issue. This is now a coaching issue. Yeah. And as much as I want to give Phil Bennett credit for the holding UTEP's thirteen points with you know four hundred yards, like I said, I think is a little bit still concerning. But as much as I want to give him credit, those plays are gonna lose you games. You can't have those plays. So um, it, it's a huge red flag. Huge, huge red flag for me. I don't know about yep. you. No, I mean, I completely agree because that's what this team has to kind of hold their hat on because like you said, and like we've been talking about up until this point is they're not going to be able to – I mean, yeah, Austin only had three touchdowns, but we don't know if they're going to be able to dig themselves out of a hole in, in a, against a better yeah. opponent um, Yes, because they're going to be running the ball a lot. So I think that – for me, at least, it's I'm, I'm neutral still. We don't know. It's 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 red. It's it's weird. It, there's a lot of red flags, but it's also like, you know, hopefully it can get cleaned up week two. I think playing a better team will be more indicative of how good this defense actually is, because then we can kind of it'll point out their flaws more. Um, so I think next week will definitely kind of tell us, all right, this is how good they're going to be, and it'll give us a better idea on if we think North Texas can get through those seven wins. Yeah. And would you sorry? Would you say that? Their defense now is more is is more indicative or sorry will be more of a factor in if they win than their offense based on what you saw yesterday. I think and that actually kind of segues in. I'm going to answer your question, but in a roundabout way that gets to a point that I want to talk about. Okay. So <laughs> I'm really scared of this team playing teams that are better than them, right? Like yeah. I said, when they play with the lead, I think this team is going to be really really dangerous. This team playing from behind, what did we see when early in the game right against UTEP? They brought some zero blitzes, right? Phil Bennett's trying to manufacture pressure still, um, and UTEP was able to take advantage of that. Imagine if North Texas had went down, let's just say, 14-3 to against UTEP. There would have been no cover eight, right? Or there would have been no you know, dropping eight into coverage. Uh, the run game would have still been prominent, but it – you know, they might have taken more shots with Austin Ani. It might have had to been more on – there might have been more on Austin Ani's shoulders. And if that's the case, how many games does this – I mean, how does – does this team even win the game? If you spot UTEP 14 points to start the game, like just, again, in theory. Yeah. I, I don't know how exactly this team comes back because they're so reliant on this is how we're going to play. We're going to We're going to run the ball. We're going to establish that. And maybe it pops for a few big runs. Yes. Cool. But defensively, SMU is – if you put your receivers in a one-on-one -on -one situation, it's a concern. But also, if you just drop eight, not only is SMU going to be able to run the ball better than UTEP did, mm -hmm. they have way more explosive receivers and guys who can, when they catch the ball, go for another 10, 15 yards. Like, it's just different caliber of athletes here. So, And I don't want to compare North Texas to SMU because I don't – that's not – what we're here Not for we're here, yeah. yeah we're here to compare north texas to what we think north texas should be but i think there's a very very clear script for this team to win games yep 
they're going to beat the bad teams, like I said, because they're going to be able to lean on them. The offensive line is good. The run game is good. Um, the defense is going to be able to do its job. I think Phil Bennett's very good at that. But when they play better teams, and that's what's going to decide of how good this season can be, when they play UAB, UTSA, uh, Memphis, and uh, SMU, those are the four big ones. FAU also looked really, really damn good yesterday. They beat the hell out of Charlotte. So let's throw FAU in there. When you play those five teams, how are you going to keep pace with them, basically? right? Yeah. How are you going to match up with them? And I don't know if this style of of how this team plays can beat those five. And maybe they don't have to beat those five. Maybe you beat the other seven on your schedule and you go seven and five and we're all happy. I'm just saying it feels like a very clear cut. Um, you can put this team in a box. That's what I'll say. They're, they're not getting out of the box. They're not you getting out of the box. In the box. And you're like, all right, this is what this team is. They're going to be really good at that. But if they play someone that's maybe outside the box, I'm not sure that can do that. Yeah, and I, I was actually going to bring up the the couple of games from last night. So, like you mentioned, FAU, they beat Charlotte 43-13. to So, I mean, and they got out to a hot start. Charlotte scored the good. scored in the first quarter. And Very then good. in the first half, Fort Atlantic had 26 points. So, can we see them match them in, in that situation? And not, not only that, obviously, UNLV played a FCS school. They still put up 52 points. Yeah. So... Uh, I think it was know, 45 to seven at halftime too. For what it's worth. It was 45 to seven at halftime. So they yeah. mailed it in. And yeah. So, so same type of thing. You need to, you need to be able to try to contain the other team. And how much is this team going to be able to do that? Because we're not, we're, I don't think either of us are sure that they could, you know, try to have a scoring battle with any team that they play this, this year. Um, so, yeah, it went it went exactly to plan. Like again, if North, if, if Latrell and Bennett, and Blesh are scripting out this game as realistic as possible. Obviously, you don't want Austin Ani fumbling the ball with 30 seconds left in the second quarter to give up a field goal. Holy God. Sometimes you just have those Austin Ani plays, and you're just like, what is happening? They gave they gave Ragsdale the, the fumble, by the way, on a... I mean, to me, again, that's all miscommunication, and that starts with the quarterback having the mesh point, the long mesh point. You have to know when to pull, when you're comfortable. And that might be something when you have four running backs, Guys have different mesh points. They have different points of when you're pulling. So it's yeah. just different. But anyways, that was awful. Uh, you can blame whoever you want on that. But again, if you're scripting out this game as North Texas, you can't ask for much more. Like this is pretty – it was perfect. It was perfect. So um, good win. I, I think that's that's all. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else here. Uh, overall, just in-depth things that I was looking at, real, real small stuff. I am concerned about the secondary unit. Sean Thomas Faulkner, Keelan Crosby. I th- a couple times, I think there was one on a deep crosser that they got beat on. Um, there were just some plays where I was concerned with them and what were, wasn't too impressed with. I hope John Davis is okay because if John Davis isn't okay, you have Rich Tejada at corner who played a lot, and I'm not as high on him as I am John Davis. Davis, yeah. if you have John Davis and you have Deshaun Gaddy at corner, I'm good. I'm good. You have those yeah. two, I'm good. You lose one of them, it starts to get shaky. Quinn Whitlock, also who I didn't – I mentioned the two rough in the passers. Quinn Whitlock had the taunting penalty. That's a – yeah. So, again, I thought we were done Bruni, with Bruni gonna Bruni going to get mad, as mad as Phil soon. Maybe maybe Phil should wear a different color, not yellow. Maybe maybe he needs to wear, like, green. Like Players else. aren't taking him seriously in the yellow, Colin? It's the color of the flag, man. He's, he's The players are giving him a message. Um, um, yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to ask you a question, too. <laughs> So, based on what we saw last night, and I was just thinking about this while we're, while we've been talking. So, Dan and Dimmel last night said that eight out of ten times UTEP wins this matchup. Obviously, he's zero and five since they came. However, I did kind of want to dissect this a little bit more because I think we're talking about a completely different game if they score on those first two drives and the way everyone thought they were going to score. Yeah. So, do you think it might not be eight out of ten? How many times with this UTEP team? beat north texas if it was 10 games this is i mean this is kind of what i talked about right if is if you spotted utep those points right so let's say they made the first field when they scored a touch on the second drive and it's 10-0 and then let's say it's 17-7 in the second quarter midway through yep. the second quarter it might be it, it probably is a very different game it at least goes down to the wire to a degree right again does austin Otting maybe force a throw that he didn't have to force once they got the lead right like there was never a point where I felt like Austin Ani felt pressured to make a throw, which again gets back to my whole box statement, right? Yep. If he can play within the confines of the offense, 
he's fine. He can do whatever he can he can play. But if he's forced to make that throw, it's not going to be good for this offense. So um, <laughs> I saw that too. I was like eight out of ten, Dan. Yeah. Was- well, because because you know you have the missed field goal, and then you go to the you're on the yeah you're on the North Texas is one, and they like they want to pass instead of run it. Yeah. So that's automatically 10 points. Then you have the punt for North Texas, and then you give the touchdown that they had. So that's wow, yeah. I can't math. And 17 if, points. And if 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 again, in theory, the, the Austin Audi fumble before the half, they had 30 seconds left from what the 10, 15, something like that. Yep. I mean, again, these are all what ifs, and they, they didn't happen for a reason because UTEP well, was not well, yeah, good enough. They're, they're what if exactly they're what ifs, but the team their UTEP was not good enough to capitalize on all of North Texas mistakes. And I exactly. think that you put that with any other team that they play, it, there's possibility that it could have gotten out of hand real fast. Hey, all I know, Dan and Dan will better start looking at their uh, the rest of their schedule because they got uh, Oklahoma next week. Yeah. What yeah. you think? The spread's 31 and a half, Colin. You, Bruni's bet section right here. Over. They Oklahoma might cover that one. <laughs> I might take Oklahoma to cover that one. Um, but yeah, that's I <laughs> Dana Dimmel, man. I, I just I feel bad for UTEP. I feel bad for El Paso fans, right? They, they went there and had to watch North it was Texas. Big. It was a, they had everyone it, there too. It reminded me, and this is what I, I kept going back to in my head. It reminded me of when North Texas sold out Apogee and lost to La Tech. However, that game was at least close and came down to a blocked field goal by Amik Robertson at the end of the game. Like yeah. that's what it kept reminding me of, but and that's why you know UTEP fans and UTEP as an athletic department couldn't capitalize on this high, and that's kind of just what these schools are, right? That's what you have to capitalize whenever you get to that point, so that way you can take the next step, and that comes with coaching, comes with players, that comes with development. So um, I, I feel bad, but this will probably be the last time North Texas and UTEP play for a while too, considering they're changing conferences. Yeah. So, there, there you go, North Texas. Uh, the Aust- Austin Austinani, the UTEP killer, as the they UTEP. mentioned on the broadcast. I just wanted to say – You want to know else they mentioned on the guard? broadcast? That Denton is 637 miles from El Paso. And in case you wanted to know that, it popped up at least 800 times last night. They had the same ticker on the bottom, rotating the same six stats. It's like, okay, we get it. Yep. We get it. Thank you. All right, it's Colin. That's all we had, I think. Let me check my um Yep, I have don't overreact. Defense still in discipline. Bennett adjusted. Ani is okay. And Oscar Attaway is the best running back. Those are my five bullet points from the game. Also, to really re- recap our pick 'em, you got the game prediction right. Uh and Austin Ani passing yards right. We both had the same results on the Bush reception. Did I say and... over? What yeah, Ani. Oh, I re- I thought I said under. No, you, I listened to it this morning. You said over, I said under. Um, Huge. We were both wrong on the, or we were both right on the Bush receptions being under, and we're both wrong on the turnovers forced. I believe, right? There were more than one. There was only one. There was only one. Yeah. Oh well, then we we're both right. So there you go. You have four points. I have two points. Massive. So there you go. There's the update to the pick We gotta figure out what we're gonna do. What's on the line here? Yeah, the stakes. We need to do that very soon before week one gets here um any any initial thoughts on north texas smu obviously we don't know a ton about smu um um this is gonna be the test for the aac yeah those are my initial thoughts how good were they gonna be in the aac (laughs) yeah at least they don't have to play houston again jesus christ it's true um they get to play smu yeah, I don't have any initial thoughts on it. Um, I'll probably talk talk some trash to my guy Billy and Body over there. Yeah, but you know, so yeah, hopefully, ask, North ask Texas. him ask him how he thinks it's gonna go. I mean, it's SMU's opening game, so I, I talked to him recently. I said, I said, hey man, the spread's only like nine and a half, man. He's like, SMU's gonna kill him. I was like, all right, man, we'll see, we'll see. Only, it actually is only nine and a half. It's ten and a half now. Oh, okay, <laughs> going up. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> but all right that's all we have for y'all today look at this clean 30 minute podcast get you in get you out um yep 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 facebook the green room unt spotify the green room 
uh, Huge. Apple, the green room, uh, YouTube, the green room, subscribe, follow all that stuff. Leave us a five star rating review. Um, we appreciate y'all for joining us. North Texas is one to know. So we'll be back next week.